All right, well, let's get rolling. So I'm going to share my screen. And, uh, can you see the keep screen? Yes. Small. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this up a little bit and that should make it bigger on your end. How's that? Legible enough. All right, there we go. All right, so let's get started making automation. So uh, everything we did yesterday is done. So we're going to come into here into campaigns. And like I said, there are some in here already that I put in for everybody, but we are going to build your own. So okay. Click the build your own on the top. And we are going to call this a customer with two S's. <laughs> Reactivation campaign. And we're not going to worry about a category right now. I, I tend to categorize everything, um, but um, uh, for this one, it's that that's one of those things that is very uh, uh, client specific where they like to, you know, some like to have uh, like prospects, some like to have customers. I do all mine in a numbering system, so it's it's whatever works. So we're just going to pick customer reactivate can reactivation campaign. So you start with a blank canvas like this. And the first thing you have to figure out is what are you going to use to trigger the campaign to start? And in this case, I usually recommend a tag. So we're going to drag a tag out onto the canvas. And it says tag applied. So what we're going to do is, because it's highlighted, we're just going to change the name of this. So this is a uh, lost customer. Uh, uh, upload tag applied. So we're going to just rename it that. And what I'm going to do, because I don't like typing, is I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to come in here. And when you click it, it'll give you different options. So we're going to go view and edit. And that will open the dialog box that will tell you uh, what happened. So this goal is achieved when the following tag is applied. So we don't have this tag yet. So I'm just going to paste what we just put in there. But I'm going to get rid of the last. So, so add lost customer upload. And we hit the little plus sign. And we can choose a category. So uh, this would be uh, an activity that we've loaded. And we're going to apply the category to that. So when this tag gets applied, it is going to start the campaign. So we hit save and that tag is now in place. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start sending out um, a series of emails to these, uh, to this list that has been uh, called a lost customer. So we're going to drag a sequence out like that, and we're going to take connect this arrow to this sequence. And that means that as soon as this is applied, we're going to come into this sequence and start doing whatever is inside here. So we are going to click that again. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rename it. So this will be the uh, email sequence. And click again, hit view and edit. And now we're now we're actually looking inside of this. So this is okay. a this is this is a container. And the round ones are goals, the rectangular ones are containers. So inside the container, you see that because we have an error going to it, there is a start tag, which is going to start whatever is in there. And the first thing we're always going to try and pull out is a timer. You're going to click on the timer, hit view and edit. And now we're going to decide when do we want this lost customer reactivation campaign to start. So we have a couple options. We can start it immediately, which is where there's going to be no delay. And we will run it on any day at any time. So that means as soon as the tag is applied, it's going to send the first email. Now, 
If you're like me and you sometimes work at three in the morning, this is not necessarily when you want to have an email go out. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I like to put no delay, run on a weekday at 8.15 a.m. Now I can do this one of two ways. So if I do this this way right now, it'll run at 8.15 mountain time because that's where I am here. Is it mountain time? If I have a client in Vancouver, I can select this and it will now run at 8.15 in Vancouver time or whatever whatever their time zone is. So if someone's on Easter in, in Eastern time, they'll get it two hours before. If they're in Pacific, they'll get an hour later. So I would for this, I would use their time zone. Hit save. And now what we want to do is we want to send the first email. So I drag the email onto the canvas. This is now a blank email. And for this, I'm going to go view and edit. And first thing we're going to do is we will pick a template. And I'm just going to use the plain one to start all these so I can show you how to build them. So we'll use the plain template like this. All right. Now, the in the chat is the link to Sorry, this. I guess I didn't follow which. <clears throat> you have templates I wanted? Yeah, yeah, so I put the, uh, the link for this page inside the chat. Uh, okay. So you should be able to open up this page on your own computer. I'm just going to make sure it's still in the chat. And it is still in the chat. Just in case, I'm going to post it a second time. There's the chat. Yeah, it opens up in a different web browser for me. Let's see my wife runs. Right. And then click on your mic. And then I've made some templates here. So if you click on there, it should now open up a template. I'm just getting links in the Google Docs on both things. Anonymous Koala. That would probably be you. <laughs> I will copy and paste. So going back here, I've made I've made templates for one, two, and three, and a text message. So we're going to be building all of these today. So they just show up as generic text documents for me. Right. They don't look like templates. Yeah. yeah. So how are you suggesting I implement them as templates? Okay, so the first thing you can do is, is where it says subject line, you're going to just copy this little part right here that says okay, I owe you apology. Let's back up to the email sequence. And if I view and edit what you have as an email, it comes up. Okay, so I, email. You're, you're here? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to click that and yep. view and edit. Yep. And then, that is not what I to, get. what's that? That is not what I get. Oh, you're you probably haven't selected one yet. So let me go back a little, yeah. one more sequence. So what you probably got is something that looks like this. Yes. All right. Yeah. So scroll down a little bit yeah. to where you see this one here that says simple text, and, and then just hit and hit use template. Okay. And then change all that text and text you gave me. Yep. Done. And that will now look like this one. Uh, well, yeah, I'm one week past that already. So I went to reactivation letter number one. Copy paste that in there. Yep. Right. So you want to copy the subject line. I owe you an apology. And you want to paste that right there. Okay. 
Now here's where you can have, uh, where you can really help your open rate. So it says, I owe you an apology and hit space. And then over here where it says merge, you wanna click that. And then under contact fields most common, the top one, you wanna click mm -hmm. that. And then you wanna click first name. Mm -hmm. Now what will happen is the system will dynamically put their first name into the subject line, which really helps with open rates because now it's personalized. So when you okay. when you go into when you're in Google, for example, it'll be putting that name right in the in the subject line there. Um, because this is going to be from you, so you have a couple options. You can you right now this is set to come from the contacts owner, but when it's a when it's a reactivation, I would much rather have it come from you personally. So you click the pencil and you would click here and you would put click on your own name so that it's going to show that it's coming from you and not from, um, from, the, from the system. Because what can happen down the road is if you have more than one user on your system and someone else is assigned to that contact, it'll dynamically put either one in. So I, for a reactivation, I always like to have it come from the someone specific so they're all, they're all coming out the same way. So now we go back to the template. And what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight all of this and copy it. And then we're going to go back into the campaign and just paste it in. Now, because I've pasted as plain text, you'll see that it's lost all the formatting. So what we're going to do first is we're going to fix the formatting. And as a general rule, the more breaks you put in for paragraph, the more likely it is to get read. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is it makes it easier to read as opposed to, you know, this big clump at the bottom is a little tough. Yeah. So I tend to use a lot of one sentence paragraphs. So, and it does greatly improve readability. Once I'm done, it now looks like this, which is a lot more readable than that big block of text. So mm -hmm. you always want to try and break them down as much as you can so that it's, it's bite-sized chunks. So now working through the top. So again, here where it says, dear contact name, this is not the right format. And I did this intentionally. So again, you have to get used to using the merge field. So you're going to highlight that. You're going to come up to a merge field, contact field, most common, and first name. Um, is, if you want to know easy way to tell if it's a correct field or not, it'll have a tilde, uh, a little curly thing front and rear. So if it's got brackets, it's wrong. <laughs> so with a lost customer reactivation campaign, whether it's accurate or not, the best way to get someone to respond is to apologize, whether you've done anything or not. If you haven't done anything, they will tell you, which is a good thing because you're, you're looking for a response. Um, parts of this, you will not use a merge field. So for example, uh, in your case, Egbert, it would be when I first decided to become a home inspector, you would just, you would just type it in there. Uh, it was because I felt passionate about helping people like you and then you tell them what you do. So, you know, um, um, make sure that your home purchase is, you know, that, that you're getting a, a quality home or whatever, however you want to work. Um, 
the rest of the email goes on to just say, you know, we haven't heard from you in a while and for whatever reason. So keep in mind, these are all templates and they do need to be personalized to be in your voice. And um, the thing with, with voice, to get it right, um, the easiest way to do it is actually, uh, sounds weird, but it works really well, is take your email, go into the bathroom, stand in front of the mirror, read it and record it, and then play it back. And if it's wrong, you'll hear it when you do the playback. Uh, it's, it, it, like I said, it, the first time you do it, it'll, it'll feel really, really awkward, but it is a great way to get a really good email um, that is going to resonate with the person that you are sending it to. Um, so moving further along uh, with the apology, I'd like to offer you and then whatever you're willing to give. So that now this can be a lot of things. This could be a, a checklist. It could be a phone call. It could be whatever. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to involve money or buying anything. Um, you know, although if you'd like to send a box of chocolates, I'm sure they would like that, but it's, it's something that, that may or may not cost you anything. I would recommend if you've got a big enough list that it shouldn't cost you anything, but it should give them value. And then the last part is, although it probably is going to be obvious, but you should always restate what they have to do. So it could be simply reply to this email, simply call me at 403-555-1212. Um, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the uh, instructions are, make sure that you state it and make sure they are crystal clear. If you have access to a 12 year old, ask them to read the letter and explain it to you because if they can explain it, you've got it right. Because you're, you're always trying to write it about a grade five level in emails. Um, the, uh, <laughs> and, and it, it's, that makes me cringe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? The, 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 we've tested it. And we've had emails go out from dental offices where the, we run through the, uh, uh, the plush Kincaid score. And it comes out where it's like grade 15 and the email bombs. And then we rewrite it down to a grade five and it does great. So same same content it's just worded differently so that it's easy um, and it doesn't matter if you're uh, whether it's trades or professional it makes no difference it always is keep it simple so okay um, last little bit um, you know you, again you want to tell them what your hope what you hope to have them achieve and then the last bit where it says email signature, I want you to delete that and back up. And then what we're going to do over here on this block is we're going to drag signature down underneath. And you use easier to come from the bottom up. Once you've got the signature there, again, you want to change it to your name. And it now puts your signature in the bottom. So it's all nice and pretty like that. Sorry, where did you grab the signature from? This little box here. It says oh, that one. Yep. Uh, and drag it underneath the depending on what you're using for a, a browser it can be a little if you go sideways it'll want to put it on the side like this so don't right. do that you want to put you want to try and bring it in from the bottom it's easier to get it up from the bottom end like that and then you have two which you don't want so you just want one So the last thing you want to do here, once you've got it all ready to go, is you want to come over here to Actions, and you want to hit Preview. And now what you'll see is it will give you a preview of what the email is going to look like on desktop, and more importantly, on mobile. Uh, always make sure the mobile one looks good, because you're going to find 70 to 80 percent of the people that you email to are going to be reading it on their phones. And that number is continuing to climb. So, so as long as it looks good, and this is the other reason you don't want to have a big block of text because this is easy to read. If I went back and changed all this into a big block, it would be really difficult to read. 
once you've done that, you want to click test and you're actually now going to email it to yourself because now you're going to see how it see how it actually shows up because these are drafts and they are fairly accurate but they are not 100 percent because every for example the reason i have i have an android and a uh, an apple is because <laughs> Uh, I have found that I do stuff that looks great on the Apple and then I look at it on the Android and I'm like, what the hell? It just does not look the same. So um, you always want to do everything you can to make sure it's readable and that's why you want to email it to yourself. So you would just click your name here, hit send, and it's gone. And then you can look at it. It'll give you a little test and you can make sure it's right. Once you're happy with it, uh, you want to do one last thing. You want to rename it. Sorry? Well, somehow it um, has you as the signature. It has me as the signature on your system. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, did you, hold on, let's go back. So you've got, uh, da, 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 email one, you can edit. So down here, you're saying it's got my signature on it? Yeah, so it's, the signature says contacts owner. Right. Have you, did you change this to you up here in the signature block? Uh, no. So if you click, if you click the, the signature block at the bottom and then up here, so right now it says contacts owner. Uh, and you would want to have it and you would want to change it to you, but I can't change it to you because you're not in my system. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Having multiple places to have to edit one particular block is awful. Yeah, it's so it's it's the the dreaded uh, you know double edged sword where you have a lot more control because you have a lot more switches and dials, but it also has to be <laughs> So once you're done and you like it, uh, all you will do is you'll come up here and you'll hit draft and switch this now. It'll turn to ready and this will turn blue. And that means that email one is now good to go. Okay. So if we come out of here, email one is now there. Can I leave it as a draft or anything? Yep. Yep. Because nothing is going to happen until everything in here is marked as ready and then we okay. mark the sequence as ready. So okay. for now, nothing will happen. All right, so email one goes out. We're going to come back here and we're now going to look at email letter two. And you'll see I put a little note in here that this would get sent two days after email number one. So we'll come back. We're now going to drag out another timer. And we're going to edit it. And this time we're going to change to two days. And this is where you get a lot of control. So the first one we said run on a weekday at 8.15 a.m. Now, if they didn't respond to that, there's, you have a couple options. Um, my preference is to move the second email into the afternoon on a weekday. So the first one went first thing in the morning. The second one goes mid-afternoon, say 2.30, 2.45. So we'll change that to 2.45 p.m. And again, we're going to use their time zone and hit save. Now we can do one of two things. So you can either drag another email onto the canvas like that, or you can click this one and you can duplicate it. And by duplicating, it saves you some steps because now when we view and edit it, a lot of the things that you already want are going to be there. So for example, it's already gonna have your from in the top, uh, the subject line you are going to want to change. So if we go to letter number two, we're gonna copy the subject line, go back to subject line here, paste it in. Um, so 
updated resources to help you and then what you want to help them achieve. So um, run a four minute file or whatever it happens to be. And again, if you want to improve your, your open rate, put the first name back in. Right. Coming back to our letter, so we have the contact name now here. We already have the contact name in the email because we copied it, so we don't need to copy that. And we know that the signature is at the bottom, so we don't need to copy that. We just got to copy the guts here. So we'll copy that. And then we'll come in here. And now all I'm going to do is paste. So now it's there. Again, we got a little bit of formatting to do because things never are exactly the same. So we'll just take this extra space out. And same thing. So um, you'll want to customize it a little bit here, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit there. Again, how they get it, and don't don't worry about making email one, two, and three radically different. Um, a lot of the things that we do is we'll send out email one. The only thing that will change on email two will be the subject line, and what we'll do is on the top here, we'll put a square bracket, the word reminder, all in caps, and another square bracket, and then uh, that changes your subject line. And then the only thing you need to do to the email is you would, after your intro, a few days ago, I emailed you, but Perhaps you missed it. So, just in case, here it is again. Oh, well, you're done. And that's it. You're, that, that's the easiest way to send email number two if, you, if you're not big into writing. Um, Email three is going to be the same idea again, but you're going to change the word reminder to last call or last chance or final notice or something like that. And that is as difficult as it has to be to do, to do a three letter sequence. This one is a little different. So updated resources, do the update. Your signature is still there. You can now preview it, same thing. Um, I'm not a big proponent on having, uh, on emails like this, I'm not big on having a lot of images or logos and it's because they're intended to be personal. Uh, if you were sending a personal letter to your mom by email, you would not be putting your logo on it. So um, don't, uh, don't do it here. So. Uh, make sure again it looks good. Once you're happy with that, close it. Send yourself a test email. And once you're happy with it, you can now change this to ready. Oh, we forgot one thing. We've got to rename it. This is going to be email two. Now you may want to make for down the road, you may want to make your email descriptions a little more descriptive. So it might be customer customer reactivation email too. Right. So that if you are using the emails, the old emails as templates, you'll know what the original one is for because email two is not particularly <laughs> so. All right, so now that's two. We'll come back here, we'll now open number three. And this one says send three days after number two. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a timer and I'm gonna drop it below um, because I can loop it back. So you can you can actually make the sequences 
kind of go like a, an S or you can, sure. uh, we have some clients that just like having everything linear from, from left to right. Um, it's, it doesn't matter which way you do it, it's just preference. So again, we'll set this, this is three days. I would send this one on a specific day of the week and I would send it on a Saturday. And I would probably send it at about 9 a.m. in their time zone. And the reason for that is because I know it's a Saturday now, is when I bring out the email, I'm gonna build this one from scratch. And this will be email three. So I'm going to be, highlight the subject line. Again, on this one, I'm gonna just pick the simple one. Change the owner to me. Change the subject line to, are you still looking to blank? And then add that first name again question mark which you'll see is there and I want to get rid of all of this so we don't need it that so same thing now here, here's why I did the, is I can now go happy Saturday, first day, because we know it's going on a Saturday. And, and this very much personalizes the email. And uh, I can do this one of two ways. If I don't put anything in here, because there's no image, this will show up inside uh, Gmail. So they'll see that it is very personalized and it says happy Saturday, you know, Dave, Rick, whatever. Post that down. Now I'm going to paste in all the rest of it. I should have not done that as plain text, but I will now do it the other way. So it leaves all the formatting in. And again, get rid of all the spaces. And same thing, you would want to just customize this to um, whatever it is that your um, business is about. And again, pull your signature onto the bottom, set it to yourself, um, do your preview, make sure that you're happy with how it looks, send a test. And once you're happy with it, set it to ready and you're good to go. So that, that's your three emails. The last thing on the list that we have here is a text message. Now the thing with text is uh, if, you, if you've been getting text messages lately that are marketing, they're very obviously marketing because it's, um, you know, are you interested in uh, having a great lawn? Click this bit.ly link and find out how. Very obviously a text message. Those will get deleted. And also uh, they have a very high rate of spam complaints. So if you, if you get text messages like that, if, depending on the system they're using, but the majority of them, if you type stop, uh, it will remove you from their ability to um, to text you. And it's because the, um, the backbone that is sending the text messages watches it. And uh, if you really want to get them in trouble, don't send stop, send spam. And they will, they will flag them. And honestly, if they are spamming, you should put spam if you have no idea who they are. So in this case, um, the uh, three days after email 23. Hmm, this should be email three. Um, so the text message here is again, hi, first name. So you're again, you're making sure that they know who you are. This is, and now it's your name from your company. So this is 
uh, Rick from Railgun, because you want to make sure that they realize immediately that they know who you are and it's very personal at that point. Uh, and then all you're doing is again referring to the emails that you've sent because depending on the system you may have sent three emails but they may not have seen any of them so by sending a text message like this you're now just doing a follow-up so it says i've emailed you three times over the last week but i haven't heard from you should i give up trying to reconnect with you and the reason we word it that way is because a positive response is a no which it's a it's a pattern interrupt for most people where um, you know, you, you would say that have you, for example, if you were a, if you were a doctor, would you, you would say something like, have you given up on trying to restore your health? The answer you want is a no, which in effect is a positive. Um, it's also much easier for people to respond when you're asking for a negative word. Mm -hmm. Um, so if, if, if you, uh, if for those of you that have ever had me call you, you'll notice the one thing I always say when you answer the phone is, am I catching you at a bad time? Because I want to hear no. Um, and so any other, any, anything other than a yes, you can just go ahead and keep going. So um, there's, and I put the little explanation as to how that works down at the bottom here. So now we need to go and we need to create this. So, you cannot inside of keep you cannot automate a text message so what you need to do is you need to put your timer here so three days and run on a weekday at 8 a.m and now what we're going to do is i'm going to apply something different here and this is a task and what a task does is it will create a reminder on your phone for you that there is something else that you have to do. And this, this can be used for a lot of things. It can remind you to, in this case, send a text message. Uh, it can remind, you can create a task to set a quote. You can create a task to remind them that uh, you're coming at two o'clock. So a task is exactly that, it is, it, it's a task. So. We'll open that and type. Um, so this will be other because there is no one for SMS yet. So send SMS question. And then in your body, you're gonna put, just so you know what it is. Um, and again, we can put them, we can put the merge fields in. So first name space, last name, space, was emailed three times, but has not responded. Send, I don't know what's called, reactivation, text. And in this case, you will assign this to yourself. Uh, priority, um, and th this is personal. Um, in my mind, this is non-essential, uh, but you should have a um, have a way of determining for yourself whether things are critical, essential, or non-essential. So, I put non-essential on this because if you don't send it, nothing bad will happen. Um, nothing good will happen either, but there won't be anything bad. So, to me, this is a non-essential one. Uh, and pop up reminder, you don't need that. So at this point now, the task is now done. So we're going to change that to ready. And close that. And that task is now complete. And this sequence is now done. So you would mark this as ready, that all these things are ready to go. It would come out here. Your email sequence is now done. So what happens inside here? So there are a couple of things that you can do, but for now, the only thing you want to have um, happen 
is you want to have a way to stop this, right? Because if they contact you after email one, you don't want to be sending them email two, email three, and a text because they've already contacted you. So there's a couple ways to do this. One of which is you can pull out this goal, which is called email link clicked. If we connect that up, right now, if you look at it, you'll see there is really nothing on this page for them to click because there's no option here. So zero of zero links, zero of zero of zero of zero. So we have to fix this. So what you do is you go back in your email sequence. And let's go back into the edit. So here, where it says to take advantage of the guest, simply, and this is where we say how they get the gift. So here you could say simply call me at 403-555-1212. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this. We're going to come up here to where the link is. We're going to change this to a phone number. And we're going to, whoops, that wasn't what I wanted. 403-555-1212. And we're going to insert the link. So that what happens now is you notice this is now changed to a hyperlink. Okay. So if they're on their phone and they click this, what we can do now is come back out here, email link clicked, view and edit. So if we come, no, oh, that was on track. All right, we got to do this. We got to do it again. I got to do this <laughs> way. Yeah, it, um, easy way to do this. I forgot they changed that on me. So we can go here, and we'll change that to uh, simply to think of it simply. Let's just change this to click here. And we'll make, I don't have a link that's active. So for now, I'm just going to have this go to Google. Good old Google, which is safe. All right, so now it's click, click here, come back out. Email link clicked. And I just select that. So if they happen to click, that will pull them out of the entire sequence. Okay. And that will stop it. So you would do that for each of the three emails, is give, give a way for the system to stop sending the email based on what they do inside the email. So I'm starting to get the email and click I'll give that some text there. Okay. So that is that's basically your system right there. And that's that's as complicated as a campaign needs to be. To do and that. is there ever a don't contact me? Or... Yeah, so every email, you have two ways to do this, but from right out of the box, all of these things will have this unsubscribe link at the bottom. Good enough. And that is, <laughs> that, yeah, that is, that is required uh, pretty much globally. So yep. um, keep puts that onto the bottom of all of them. And once they click that, it'll, doesn't matter what you do later. So if, even if you try and send a broadcast or anything else, if they've clicked unsubscribe, you never have to worry about them getting an email because they don't want one. So the unsubscribe link is there. All right, so that now is your campaign. The last thing to do because it's going to create a message for you. So now I need to connect my phone. Now I can show you how to do this. So this reactivation campaign to go outside of Keep. So basically, they're going to reactivate a campaign. They're going to 
I'm say I'm going to give them a free resource on fall maintenance program. Yep. Um, so then after the emails click, there would be a send an email with the PDF. And why would I do that? Just to, just to stay on top of it, just to remind them I'm still here. Just to... Yeah, a lot of it is, so um, for example, um, the last house I bought, I do not remember who the realtor was that I used. And that was four years ago. So a lot of, um, a lot of times, you know, and you probably had it where someone will ask you, um, you know, uh, you'll be talking about, you know, I got my tires changed, where'd you get them changed? Um, at Cal Tire. Okay, you, you know, and you should go talk to, um, um, and you can't remember the name because it just, you know, like they, the service was great, but after six months, you're just not going to remember who it is. Um, and that's, that's the reason why you always want to stay in touch regularly. Um, for like for us, for email, it's once a week. Um, I have letters that I'm subscribed to where they send one a day. And they are sufficiently interesting and entertaining that I don't open all of them, but I do open a lot of them. And I would never consider unsubscribing, even though it's one a day, um, because the, the content is just that good. Um, so it, it depends on, um, on what you're doing and who you're emailing. So for example, you might get, um, you might get an email daily from the Home Inspectors Association, assuming there is such a thing. Um, chances are good, even if they send you daily, you're not gonna unsubscribe because you have a vested interest in knowing what's going on in your industry. Conversely, if you're emailing to past clients, daily might be a little much. Actually, it probably would be. But you know, once a month, would be fine because there's always something seasonally that you can be telling them to check. You know, it's, you know, right now or say in October, you might want to send one out that says, you know, winter's coming. Here's how you make sure that your outside drain isn't going to freeze just to pick something, right? Um, or how to look for, um, you know, in November, it might be, you know, here's some ways to tell if your windows are starting to, you know, in looking for replacement. So not enough that they're going to want to unsubscribe and the, the information that they're going to get is valuable. Um, you know, this time of year, if you are a tax accountant, you probably want to say, you know, things that you need to start getting ready for, for December 31st or, um, you know, how to maximize uh, the deductions for this year, you know, whatever that happens to be. So it's always, a matter of staying in touch regularly, but not just, the message should not just be buy my stuff because those will get you unsubscribed from in a, in a heartbeat. Now there should always be some sort of offer on every email and that's usually where the PS comes in. So um, for example, if you were doing the one with, you know, how to check your windows, if you're not sure how to check, um, you know, you can give me a call and I, I, I can swing by and do it in this X amount, right? Because that's now, a, a, it's, not a, it's not an overt request for them to buy something from you. It just says, if you need help, I'm here to help you. And here's what it'll cost. That's information. So that, that is always fine. It, the, the, the key, like I said, in reading in front of the mirror is it needs to sound personal and not like, um, you know, not like the um, uh, machine gun voice on the TV ads that, you know, hurry, don't delay, buy now, call now, have your Visa or MasterCard number ready, Our mm -hmm. uh, th those don't work, right? Um, they were kind of funny in the, in the 80s, but they're, they don't work anymore. So, um, all right, last step. The, and now I've got to connect my, let's see if I can remember how to do this from yesterday, iPhone. Share. Mirroring Zoom. Survey says. Okay, should be able to see my phone now. Think so? Yep. 
Fabulous. All right. Very good. Yeah, we saw your phone. Okay. All right. So this is where you're going to add the um, add the text message. And the easiest way to do that would be to use yourself. Click text. Uh, decide what number you want to have it come from. And as you can tell, I use a couple. Uh, and at the bottom, it's going to give you the ability to uh, manage or insert templates. And you would hit manage. And you're going to have a new template. And this will be customer reactivation. And then you want to enter your message. So here we go. Hi. And then you hit the little uh, uh, the parentheses with the number, which is there. And you can now go contact first name, comma. This is Rich from Rogan. I've emailed you a few times over the last week, but I haven't heard anything from you. Um, and you can see that it's telling you how much space you've used and how much you've got left. Um, uh, should I get up? And then just hit add and now you've got it. So now on the phone, whoops, didn't want to do that. When you come back to your tasks, no, there aren't any right now, but if there was a task, let's just make one. So send a text. This is not a text, I want a task. It will give you the, the list of people that you have to send the, the texts to, and all you're going to do is you're just gonna use the template and send it off. Um, the reason for that is you can customize it if you want, and you can also, so if it's someone you know personally, you may want to change the wording a little bit. And the uh, when you use the template, it does give you the opportunity to uh, tweak the text before you send it off. So, so that is everything all set up. Can you tell me about porting a number to keep? Porting a number, okay. So, um, you have two options. You can either use, uh, so like for this one, you'll see I've, I've, I've went and gone and taken the keep offer of the free number. Mm -hmm. um, you can also port your, if you have a business number that you already use, you can port that directly into keep. Um, I've never done it, but it, from everyone that has it, so it's a fairly straightforward process that um, what it will do is it just duplicates the number so that if you, somebody calls your work number, uh, it will also ring on the phone and show you that it is the work number, not your actual cell. So your cell will have two actual numbers in it, one of which is your personal one and one would be your work one. And you can do it either way. Mm. I just, uh, it comes to the communication page. Yep. And it doesn't really give me an option. Do I, I don't want to pick a new number. So I just go through regular communications or? Go for your. Yeah. I will do some research on that for you and uh, find out because no one has ever asked me that yet. So I will find out how to do it. 
So you have a you have a number that you already have that you want to keep using? Well, just the phone number I already have. I guess so if I just want to use my cell phone number, my existing business number. Oh, okay. So just just pick a number for this and then don't use it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds weird, but that's the other way to do it is just don't uh, don't use the new use the the number. It's there if you ever do want to use it, but you don't have to. You can send it from the other one. So where I had the where I sent the text and it gave me the two numbers, um, you have the option of going either way with it. So you just use the other number. The advantage to using the the the, the keep number is that you can now set work times, and you can so for example so for this eight seven five five seven five seven, if I set my work time from nine to five. Uh, Monday to Friday and somebody calls me on a Saturday, uh, it'll just say that, uh, you know, you can have a separate voicemail. Your phone won't ring. You won't know that it's there. It'll just say, uh, hey, this is Rich. You've reached me after work hours. Please leave your name and number and I'll get back to you on Monday morning when I'm back. You can also do the same thing with text messaging. So if somebody texts me on Saturday, the automated part of that will send a, re a text reply back saying you've reached us after work hours. Uh, I will get back to you on Monday. So whatever, whichever way it comes in, it'll respond back out. But again, you don't, you don't have to use it. It's there if you want it. And the number is included with the system. So any other questions? No. Yeah. Chewed up my hour pretty good. That was like 57 minutes. That's bang on. Um, so let me just go back to the other screen. Get my phone off there. All right. Um, so tomorrow, last thing we're going to do is uh, up. Show, I'm going to show you how to upload the list and tag it, and uh, we'll watch the uh, first ones go out and uh, uh, give you a little bit of insight on how to read the. Uh, delivery reports so you know exactly what is uh, happening at the other end so all right all right so I'll uh, I'll get this one converted as well I'll probably have to, it'll probably take a little while like the other one where I gotta process it first and then cut it in half and upload it twice because I exceeded YouTube's limits yesterday until I broke it apart and right. I'll also put the uh, I'll email you the link for the Google Sheet so you have the templates. And uh, once the transcript for this one is done, I think the other one is now processed. I just got to paste it up and uh, we'll have the transcripts up as well. So, yeah. Yeah. all right. Thank Nothing you else. Much. That will do it. And uh, thanks very much. And we will hopefully see you tomorrow. That's the plan. I got a big infection, but it starts really early. So. That was good. <laughs> All right. Great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye bye.